Back to our lab diagram. We have three users, user A, user B and user C, connected to our QFX switch. Usually, when an interface is configured as an access port, it is intended to be used just for a single device. But today, for some reason, user B decided to connect a switch to this port and then several end devices behind that switch. Now, either intentionally or unintentionally, the network will be opened up for Mac spoofing or Mac flooding attacks, both of which contribute to denial of service attacks, which can stop access or even bring a network down. To prevent the number of MAC addresses being learnt on a port, we can enable the MAC limiting feature. MAC limiting is going to protect the switch from attacks that use MAC addresses, allowing an administrator to specify the maximum number of MAC addresses that can be learned on the layer 2 access port. And once that limit is reached, all new MAC addresses are going to be dropped. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing as 86% of viewers aren't currently subscribed. Persistent MAC learning is also known as Sticky MAC and this is going to allow the switch to keep the MAC addresses that have been learnt dynamically on an interface even if the switch reboots. Now what we can do if we enable persistent MAC learning along with MAC limiting then this is going to enable the interface to learn the MAC addresses of trusted devices and then no more MAC addresses are going to be able to be learnt on that interface. Let's open up the lab diagram and take a deeper look and try and explain this technology a bit clearer. So here's our technology. Now what MAC limiting will do, say if I done a MAC limiting limit of two, we have four MAC addresses here, one, two, three, and possibility of the MAC address of the switch. Four will be coming in. Now if I done a MAC limiting of two, it will do the switch MAC address, and the first one of these three that comes up could be C, could be D, or could be E. And they will be the two, and the other two will not be allowed to enter. But say that um, user Z powers up first, and it takes the MAC address of the switch and of user Z, and holds that in its MAC address table when you've got MAC limiting set at two, but your trusted device was user Y, then user Y and user X will no longer be able to be present in the MAC address table. So what persistent learning does is you would power up user Y first and then you would use persistent learning. This means that even if the switch is rebooted or the MAC address table is cleared, that will be the MAC address that is saved on the switch in the switch's MAC table and user X and user Z will be untrusted devices. So with a combination of persistent learning and MAC limiting, then you would have user Y and possibility of the switch address and no other MAC addresses would be learnt by the XE001 interface. That's what we're going to have a look at here. We'll see all the MAC addresses first, then I will power off user X and user Z. We'll keep user Y on, we're going to do persistent learning, clear the MAC address table and see if it works. Right, sounds like a plan. So let's see if we're learning any, oh, sorry. Let's see if we're learning any MAC addresses. Currently we are not. Um, that might be because we don't have a VLAN configured. Let's see, show VLANs. All right, we've only got the default VLAN. Let's do a VLAN configuration for that particular interface. Delete, I think the family inet will be on there, yeah. So delete family inet. I always do this. I haven't um, actually created the VLAN, so let's go back and create the VLAN. Set VLAN, VLAN 10, the VLAN ID of 10. Interface 
xe01.0 and the ethernet switching this interface model does access VLAN member VLAN 10 okay um, I might as well do that for the other side as well um, it's not actually needed edit interface XE 003.0 family I uh, family Ethernet switching we'll use this command we'll also delete the family INET otherwise there will be a conflict so say up commit check let's commit that then we're going to have a look in the MAC address table and see how many interfaces, how many MAC addresses we see. At the moment, we only see one MAC address, which is, okay, there's a second one. They're coming in slowly. We're only seeing those two. Let me open up the other two switches and see why that is. The other two hosts. All right, so user X wasn't even logged in. Let's see if that makes a difference. And from our diagram, C is, well, that is user X, C from our diagram. Y is Y and Z not registering. Press enter a couple of times. And let's do the same on the other one. Okay, let's see if that made any difference. It made no difference. What I will probably do then, I'll probably configure an IP address, ping the other side of the link, and that should definitely bring up Y and Z and also user D. So Y and Z. Y and Z uh, obviously they came up now well, I'm not going to configure the one on the other side. We'll just concentrate on XE001 interface. I'm going to do Mac limiting. So what I will do, we can see that all four came in. What I will do is um, I will turn off the interfaces connected to C and E. So we should only be left with D and then we can, we could even reboot the switch and see what happens. And they should still be in there. But I won't reboot the switch. I will clear the MAC address table. So I'm going to turn those off now. User X and user Z I will turn off. And then we'll do the configuration. It's only been a second for you, but it's been about two minutes for me. I've turned off user X and user Z. Let's have a look if their details are still in the MAC address table. And if they are, we will clear it. Okay, so run clear Ethernet 
switching table. Run that command twice. Shouldn't hurt. Okay, nothing is in the switch table now. Everything has gone. I'm expecting the two devices that are, okay, they've come back. Well, the switch has come back and um, user D has come back. All I'm waiting for is, is for user Y. And if user Y doesn't turn up, well, it will, it will take a while. So let's just wait for 30 seconds or so. And if not, what I will do, I will ping user D. So I'll put an IP address on user Y, ping user D, and um, that should bring up the MAC address. I'll do that now rather than waiting. I bet as soon as I do start this, though, it will come up. So user Y has an IP address. So let me put an um, IP address on user D. as per our diagram. One more try. Okay. Actually, this will not, oh, it will work. Okay, I didn't think that I had put user D in the correct VLAN. Let's check there. Okay, so it must have been already there, configured. So now we have the correct MAC addresses. The other ones are down, so let's do that configuration. And this configuration is done under edit switch options. Edit switch options. And what I will say is, actually, let's say edit interface XE00. Edit interface XE001.0. And for that, we're going to, let's do a question mark to see what options we have. First, we're going to do persistent learning. This will mean that this MAC address will remain this and this MAC address will remain in the MAC address tables permanently. Then we're going to say interface MAC limit of two. And for any other MAC addresses coming in, we're gonna drop them. Excellent. Oh, sorry, I wanted to say top show compare, not top show commit. And this is the configuration that we've got. Let's commit that. Look at the MAC address table, see what's changed. We can now see that these two MAC addresses have turned to P, whereas previously they were learnt dynamically. Previously they said dynamic. And now they're saying that they've been learnt through persistent. So we should be able to turn on the other two devices now, but their MAC addresses should not be learnt. I'm going to do that right now. Both user X and user Z have been turned on now. And let's see if we see any MAC addresses in the MAC address table, which I'm not expecting to. No additional MAC addresses. Let, we should still be able to ping because we didn't limit the IP address. We just limited the MAC address. 
So let's do some configuration. Interface G00, IP address 192.168.0.7. Random IP address, totally different one that we had from previously. And on user Z, we're gonna use dot nine. So we can ping it, but do we see anything in the MAC address table? Here's the truth, the proof in the pudding, and we don't. So the MAC address, the MAC limiting, and the persistent learning work. And there is another command that we can use, run show ethernet switching interface xe.001.0. Previously, this MAC limit here was 8192, and we can see that this command has now made the MAC limit 2, and we can see that AD, what does AD stand for? The packet action is drop, and LH means the MAC limit has been hit. That's it for this lab. Thank you for watching, and we'll move on to the next one. It's question time. Question 1. How can you restrict the number of MAC addresses learned on a port for Juniper switches? A. VLAN B. Port security C. VSTP D. MAC limiting The answer is D. You may have also answered port security, but this term is more commonly associated with Cisco devices. Juniper uses a different set of features and terminologies. Question 2. What is the equivalent of a sticky MAC address on a port for Juniper switches? A. Port security. B. MAC limiting. C. Persistent learning. D. Static MAC. The answer is C. On Juniper switches, the equivalent of a sticky MAC address on a port is achieved through persistent learning, a feature that allows the switch to retain dynamically learned MAC addresses across reboots, providing a form of permanency similar to sticky MAC addresses in other network devices. To get the complete question banks for all the JNCISENT videos, drop us an email at info at